guys, I'm sweating. So today I'm gonna be showing you three ways to make fake sprinkles. I use a lot of sprinkles, like a lot. It's almost a problem. Mostly for squishies, but these could come in handy for any kind of dessert themed craft that you wanna do. I am gonna show you how I normally make them. I will do whatever it takes to make those sprinkles, but I know there are people out there who are normal. So I'm also going to offer some easier, cheaper, less time consuming options as well. I'm going to start with the easy ones and make my way to the best and ultimate way to make sprinkles. Okay, let's make them sprinkles. Okay, so method number one, if you want to do something that's really quick and cheap and you don't want to put too much effort into it, you can use these craft strings. Honestly, I have no clue what these are, but I found them in the craft section at Walmart. So, mm -hmm. or rubber bands. You can also use those little rainbow loom bands and all you need to do is cut them up. Literally, that's all you do. I told you the first one was going to be easy. You can even cut multiples at a time if you want to get really crazy. Whoa now, whoa. And here go the rubber bands. You can either cut them super thin to get more of a long sprinkle shape that's really tiny or make them a little chunkier. Most of them are just flying completely out of the frame. Get control of your sprinkles, man. This is as easy as it gets making fake sprinkles. Just find any sort of colorful string or band and chop it up. <gasps> Imposter. Now, this is not a squishy video, but I do wanna show you guys how these look when they're being used. So, I have these three panda buns that I painted over in advance, and I'll just be using one for each different method. So I'm gonna use the chocolate bun for these, and I'm gonna add the frosting on there, and then throw the sprinkles on for decoration. And here they are, in action. For how little effort these require, I actually don't think they look too bad. I don't particularly like how dark and pea-ish the yellow color is, but eh, that's okay. And again, this is not a squishy video, but you can't just show a squishy on camera and not squish it. I mean, I'm, I'm not a barbarian. Okay, so that was fun, but let's level up to method number two. You will need some toothpicks, acrylic paint, and some sort of packing foam or something similar. The biggest upgrade for this method is that you have complete control over the colors. You can choose whatever colors make you happy. I'm just painting over the toothpick and then just sticking it in the foam to dry. I realized that you could potentially use colored toothpicks, but I wanted to use supplies that most people have laying around and I feel like most people just buy the plain ones. Am I right? Did I just make that up? I don't know. Also, the colored toothpicks are usually really dull colors, which is, uh, you don't really want dull dingy colors for sprinkles, so this works better, I think. Once those are completely dry, you can remove them from the foam, and now all that's left to do is chop them up. Not gonna lie, these were actually really hard to cut through, but if you believe in yourself, you can do it. No, I probably should have used some sort of super cutter tool, something, something, instead of scissors, but you know, obviously tools are not my specialty, so this is how they turned out. They may be a little bit rough around the edges. <laughs> but I do think that they're a step up from the last method because they do look a lot more realistic. So again, I'm gonna show you how these look when they're actually being used. So I'm decorating the strawberry bun now, and here they are. I did cover the ones that I used on the bun in a clear coat to finish them off and give them a little bit of a shine. I think they're a little bit larger than what's ideal for sprinkles, but still, for such a cheap and easy method, not bad at all. And finally, method number three. And this is the method I use 99% of the time for sprinkles. I'm using this polymer clay that's obviously already been used a few times. I already have some pastel sprinkles and darker sprinkles laying around, so I'm gonna mix the light and dark colors together to make some nice medium colors. This clay is by the brand Sculpey. You can find it at just about any craft store or online. I'll put the links in the description to these things in case you wanna check them out. The red clay dyed my hands so bad. It's so much worse than the rest of them. Weird, but okay. Okay. 
Yeah, don't ask. What you can do is take little pieces of clay at a time and roll them into really thin strings by hand. I made my very first batch of sprinkles like this, but it takes so long and the results aren't that great because the thickness is kind of inconsistent unless you're super skilled or super patient and I was neither. So what I recommend doing is using this thing, which is called a clay extruder. This one comes with a bunch of different attachments to make different shapes, but I'm just going basic today. All you have to do is shove the clay inside, put your little attachment on there, and then screw on this little thingy. Now when you turn the handle, it will push the clay through, and that would have taken forever to roll out by hand. Put that aside and repeat with the rest of the colors. The only thing to remember when you're doing this is to try to keep the speed as consistent and as smooth of a motion as you can, otherwise you end up with these weird little kinks in the clay and you wind up making some wiggly sprinkles and I know this because I've done it before a couple of times. Ooh, spaghetti. Here they are all laid out. It's like a legit sprinkle factory. And this is how I can make so many sprinkles so fast and keep on feeding my sprinkle addiction. And now pull out a baking sheet and lay the strings across. I have to use this little pizza pan because I don't have a real oven. <laughs> well, it's real, it's just really small. So it doesn't fit a normal baking sheet. But anyway, I baked these at 275 degrees Fahrenheit. And while I was waiting, I was playing with the scraps and still recording for some reason. Oh, look at that. I made a rainbow brain. Okay, and they are done. They should be hard, but still relatively easy to break. Like you should be able to pinch them apart with your fingers. And bam, the rest of them are done. Now I'm gonna chop them up. Shocker. And I always cut multiples at a time. The clay is super easy to cut through and I actually kind of enjoy this part for some strange reason. I just find it very satisfying. Everyone I've seen make polymer clay sprinkles has chopped them up with an X-Acto knife one by one, but I make a lot of these at a time and this may be just like a weird personal thing, but I kinda don't wanna spend the rest of my existence cutting sprinkles. I don't know, maybe I'm crazy. So this way makes it so much faster and easier and the results are really no different. Look at all those sprinkles. Oh, they're so beautiful. I feel like I'm doing ASMR here. Today. I'm gonna be making some sprinkles. If you don't know what ASMR is, that was probably really creepy. And these are going on that remaining vanilla bun. I think these are definitely the nicest and most realistic looking of all the methods. And they work so great on squishies. You can control the colors and make a lot at one time. So I really love how these look and feel. I've gotten a lot of requests for polymer clay sprinkle tutorials, but I know not everyone is willing to spend as much time and energy on this kind of thing as I am. So I wanted to offer some quicker and easier methods Methods. For those of you who just want something easy and you don't want to take a bunch of your time and buy a bunch of supplies for this kind of thing. So there you have it. Three different ways to make fake sprinkles. You can choose which method will work for you and your purposes. So yeah, I hope that you guys found something useful in this video. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next week. Bye.